All right, so let's get into your book here, Three Ring Circus, Kobe, Shaq, Phil, and the crazy years of the Lakers dynasty. Um, what did you glean that you didn't know going in, Jeff? I mean, I, I think the thing I didn't realize, the thing that really caught me was the 3 4 season, which is the last season they were together, which right. I just found to be one of the most fascinating seasons in any team's ever gone through, if you look at it. Um, Malone and Peyton joined the team. They have this quote-unquote super team. They're going to dominate the league. But Shaq reports out of shape. The whole year he's miserable because he wants a contract extension. Jerry Buss won't go near it. Phil Jackson doesn't know whether he's coming or going. He's tired of coaching Kobe Bryant. Kobe is planning on leaving for the Clippers and is pretty steadfast that at the end of this year he's going to sign with the Clippers. Meanwhile, he's flying in and out of Evo, Colorado, facing a potential of 20 years in prison. Um, and he's mad at the Lakers because of the quality of the plane they have him flying. The whole season is just a mess. They make the NBA Finals against Detroit, and they lose in five games, and, and Kobe, lead, you know, they have a team party after game five, and Kobe goes up to Kareem Rush, and Kareem Rush thinks everything's great. They're going to come back the next year, and Kobe says, there's no way I'm playing with that mother effort again. And he's referring to Shaq. And just the whole year, I've never, it's amazing they made the NBA Finals. It's one of the most fascinating single seasons of just train wreck after train wreck in the history of, uh, at least my history of writing about sports. Well, I mean, you know, you could you could make the case that, you know, your book and the, the era of, of that we're discussing is, what would you say, the sequel to The Last Dance, in a way, right? I mean, that Phil, um, we just saw what Phil did with Chicago and all the craziness there, um, and we saw a 10-part documentary on that, and now here he is uh, moving to Los Angeles with... Um, one would clearly say the uh, the heir to Air Jordan and Kobe with Shaq, and you just basically described that. I mean, Phil, it's it's amazing any of his teams with everything that was going on, despite the remarkable talent, was able to pull it off. I guess would would he be the the through line in there in that Jeff? Would yeah, I think so. I also, I, it's really interesting. People say, you know, they always get the well, he had so much talent, he had to win, blah blah blah. The thing about Chicago, the pecking order was always really clear. Like, Pippen was never trying to be Jordan. It was not part of the plan. It wasn't like Pippen was plotting, you know, I should be getting more touches. I'm, I'm doing I'm better with this guy. In L.A., I mean, from the very beginning, Kobe, and this is kind of what made him great and brought a lot of his greatness, is he was, I'm better. I, I should be the number one guy. I should be the number one guy. And when you're a coach, when Phil Jackson showed up in L.A., in 99, he made it very clear. We're going to run this offense to try and go. Here's Tex Winter. He's the brainchild behind it. It's got to go through Shaq. It's going to go through Shaq. And Kobe, you're the number two guy. And um, Kobe was such a brilliant talent that ended up, they won back-to-back-to-backs. To back to back to but he never really fully bought into this idea that I'm the number two and he's the number one. And I just think that Phil was able to get so much out of that team with that level of sort of dysfunction. Um, it's pretty freaking amazing, actually. <laughs> it's pretty freaking amazing is one way to put it. Um, and so we all know that there was um, a coming together between Kobe and Shaq um, later in life. And with Kobe's life getting cut short, we know it was about a year or two before all of that, that they did get together. Does that surprise you based on you uh, digging so deep into uh, a time where uh, so many feelings and emotions were raw, Jeff? Yeah, I would say no, because I, I just think, I thought about this a lot. The book was done before Kobe died, and I was just thinking, like, who you are at 25, who any of us are at 25, is not who we are when we're, in his case, 41. And the same goes for Shaq. And I actually think, I've been thinking about it a lot. It, when you think about Kobe, you think about Shaq. When you think about Shaq, you think about Kobe. And, you know, like Hall and Oates, they don't get along well together. They don't go out together. They don't travel together. They don't frequent together. They show up at their show. They play their show, and they leave. And, but they still have that bond, that eternal bond. And I feel like Shaq and Kobe, there's just an eternal bond. And when Kobe died, for Shaq, he was just losing this person who, who you are attached to and who you did so much with. And he's never going to be your best friend, but you have this history with him that's really, really profound. And I think you saw that just hit him and over, overwhelm him when he learned of Kobe's death, just that they had this shared bond that was really rocky and really turbulent, but produced some amazing memories for a lot of people. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.